Hey everybody, Chem Class Rules here. This is ferrofluid. It's a magnetic liquid that my students and I make in lab. Want to see how we do it? Let's take a look. Now the process for making one of these ferrofluid desk toys actually starts a few weeks before you get ready to mix chemicals. And that's because the glass that you use has to go through a preparation process. The first step is to let the glass sit in a solution of OxyClean overnight and then rinse it out and add a saturated salt solution. You then have to let that saturated salt solution sit inside the glass for at least a week, but a month is actually probably better. Now this is a somewhat simplified version of Nile Red's process, so we're going to use basically the same amounts and chemicals that he uses in his videos. So 7.5 milliliters of iron 3 chloride and then 6 milliliters of iron 2 chloride go into 300 milliliters of water. Next, we're going to mass out 10 grams of ammonium hydroxide. The ammonium hydroxide is important because we're making Fe3O4 iron oxide magnetite and in order for the iron 2 chloride and iron 3 chloride to become Fe3O4, we need a very basic environment for the particles to form. Now since this is adjusted to a small scale that students can do on the benchtop, we're using a burette to add our concentrated ammonium hydroxide until the solution becomes this nice black color. Now while that's mixing, we're going to make some ammonium oleate, which is a soap particle that's going to coat our magnetic particles. You do this by adding a little water to a flask and then adding one and a half grams of oleic acid to our water in our flask. And then we're going to add one gram of concentrated ammonium hydroxide. Those two mixed together form ammonium oleate, which is a soap that's going to coat our iron oxide Fe3O4 nanoparticles and allow them to freely float around in our solution. So that is what our ammonium oleate soap looks like in the flask, and here's what it looks like being added to our Fe3O4 solution. Now, the next step's not actually necessary, but it looks really cool. We're going to add a little bit of hydrochloric acid to the solution to neutralize it. We've actually found that the washing process is quite a bit easier if you don't neutralize the solution first. So the washing process here is to collect as much of your magnetic particles down in the bottom of your beaker as you can using a nice powerful magnet. And once a good amount of those particles have collected on the bottom of the beaker, you're going to pour out the liquid from the top of the beaker, and you're going to wash the remaining solid in the bottom several times with just straight-up tap water. You do not have to use distilled water for this, and in fact, there's going to be a good amount of scum that comes to the top, a little ammonium oleate that's unused. You're going to want to rinse that directly down the drain. Now, the washing steps can be a little bit tedious, but they're very important if you want a good ferrofluid product at the end of the process. And my students and I have found that the more times you wash it, the quicker the separation becomes. All right, after you've done your water washes, you're going to wash with alcohol a few times. Nile Red's original procedure called for isopropyl alcohol, but we found ours to be a little short supply, so we're just using ethanol here, which does a pretty darn good job. And we also found that the ethanol used for these washes can be recycled if you collect all the magnetic particles that get left over in it and filter it afterwards. Side note, we're three and a half minutes into this video, so if you are still watching this, you're an absolute champ. All right, the next step is to put this into a desiccator. We actually use an incubator. Uh, and we dry it overnight. This drying process is really, really important. It should look like this when you're done. If it looks oily or wet at all, it needs to go back into the desiccator. Did I just say desiccator? Uh, whatever, I'm going to leave it in. Now, we want to mix our dried and coated iron oxide particles with 85% of their weight of kerosene. So the first thing that we do is take a mass of our product, and then we're going to go ahead and crush it up until a fine powder in a mortar and pestle. Now we had 2.2 grams, so 2.2 times 0.85 is 1.87. So I'm going to go ahead and add 1.9 grams of kerosene. Now the next step in our process is going to be to add our kerosene to our magnetic particles and then mix them together extremely well. We use a mortar and pestle for this, and we put one of our hyper-strong magnets down in the bottom of the mortar and pestle to make the process a little bit easier. Now, this takes a long time, and the more that you grind it together, the better your ferrofluid product is going to be in the end. And as you can see, we're getting those characteristic ferrofluid spikes there down in the bottom now that we've got everything really well mixed together. I mean, look at those spikes. That is, that is phenomenal. 
this is actually the part of the project where students start to get really, really excited about the final result. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add it to our cleaned and prepped glass storage jar. Remember that storage jar has been sitting with a saturated salt solution in it for about a month now. Not all you chemistry teachers out there, this is a tedious and messy process, but it is 100% worth it to get your students something that they can take home and be proud of that they made in chemistry. All right, everybody, the universe is full of wonder, and you should be too. And as always, thanks for watching.